think one of the most hopeful things, uh, both personally, um, yeah, sort of for all of us, or uh, sort of culturally, politically, is this utterance. I have been a fool, but I wish to be wise. And with that, I give you this poem. Mm -hmm. The Ballad of Land Rick and Rude. At the edge of the forest where Basil Dove's chorus and the Kegel flows bubbly and clear, two farm families neighbored. Together they labored side by side year after year. The rumbly acados grew heirloom tomatoes, uh, tomatoes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Adoub family, celery and cherries. They shared what they grew to make prize-winning stews and soups of incomparable merit. The farm wives were cousins. Between them, a dozen stout farm children filled out their brood. So those dozen cousins, I guess, were fourth cousins? No, first cousins two times removed? <laughs> Third cousins? Whatever. The point is, forever these families had loved one another. And the bond was the strongest between the two youngest, third cousins who seemed more like brothers. Lanark Adu would love his third cousin Rube with a fierceness as fierce as dread. And Rube's love for Lanark was just as gigantic. One soul and two bodies, folks said. Two bodies, one soul. And yet, on the whole, those bodies were rather the same. Both tall, strong of limb, and handsome and slim, each a credit to his family's good name. When the day's chores were done, Landrick split on the run to the rumbly, rumbly Akatos next door, except, of course, when Rube finished first and arrived at the Adoops house before. They fished in the river. They went to discover new marbles in the woodlands of Leonard. They hunted for thwaps and made treasure maps and often came home late for dinner. They loved ships and sharks and zisby and darts. Handy ball, wiggle the chicken. But when they got older and broad in the shoulder, a competitive spirit soon kicked in. They were evenly matched, so they struggled and scratched and usually played to a tie. It was mostly good fun, but still either one thought, who's better, my cousin or I? Who's better, they pondered, and every day wondered, my favorite cousin or I? The township of Tor fell quite a bit short of what you might call a great city, but for Lanark and Rube and the rest of their crew, the township was city of Lane. Each six weeks or so, a wagon would go to the township with produce to sell, potatoes and leeks, chariots and beets, and 12 or so farm kids as well. And there's a footnote, the farm kids were not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> they made the trip for different reasons, as will become apparent in the next stanza. <laughs> in the middle of Torrance stood a general store where candy was sold by the stick. This was the reason, no matter the season, why Landrick and Ruth made the trip. But when they'd grown older and broad in the shoulder, one day when they went on that mission, they rode to the store and strode through the door and were struck by the same recognition. They had come to this street to find something sweet, hard candy perhaps, hard, can hard candy perhaps taffy swirl, but sweeter much more than all else in the store was Ilya, the shopkeeper's girl. Sweet Ilya was neater and quite a bit sweeter than anything else in the world. They'd known the store dollars since they were all toddlers, but something was different this time. Can I help you? She said. Landrick stared as if dead. <laughs> Rude gabble, to see glad you I'm. <laughs> they rode home in a daze, unaware of the ways they both had made fools of themselves. They poked at their dinner, grew thinner and thinner. Their mothers asked, Are you quite well? Poor Reuben and Lambert, two lovesick romantics, both sighed and both pined for sweet Ilya. Each suffered alone, neither made his love known. Sound silly? It's about to get silly. 